I always like to relate this to past events that are comparable. What's happening right now is virtually identical to what happened in the 19th century with the rise of industrial technology. Uh, all of the same things were happening then that are happening now. Uh, you saw the breakdown of traditional social structures, which in those days would have been feudalism. And you saw the rise of you know, what today would be called uh, you know, commercial society, bourgeois culture, things like that. Um, and something similar is happening now with the uh, digital revolution or the tech revolution. You know, like the digital revolution is to the day what the industrial revolution was to the 19th century. Um, and digital capitalism is the modern industrial capitalism. And the social effects of that are very similar. Uh, during the 19th century, you saw people moving away from rural areas to cities. You saw an explosive growth of cities. Cities reached an all-time high in terms of population. Uh, all the problems that you find in cities existed at the time and were often much worse for the, because of the technological limitations of the time in part. Um, the social breakdowns that took place fueled a whole lot of uh, Anime, what Durkheim called anime. In fact, if you look at the development of the field of sociology, it actually developed in response to the conditions of the 19th century. Uh, August Comte mm -hmm. was a uh, was the first person to popularize the idea of sociology, and he was interested in applying what he thought were scientific principles to the study of society, largely because he was interested in examining the effects that the Industrial Revolution was having on. Uh, European society at the time, uh, and all the other people that were the considered the founding fathers of sociology, like Emil Durkheim, like Karl Marx, mm -hmm. like Max Weber, all of those were largely writing in response to the impact of the Industrial Revolution as well. But you had mm -hmm. the same thing happening in terms of identity as well as technology and urbanization. You, you had people losing their traditional identities um, you know, based on social ranking, based on their place in the feudal order, based on their status as a peasant who was native to some particular village or town or something. Uh, and you had a lot of people starting to drift off into new ideologies and new philosophies. Um, for one thing, the mm -hmm. traditional religions were starting to lose influence. Uh, and as they just said, that you started to see the rise of these secular substitutes like nationalism and liberalism and socialism and communism. Um, and we see that happening today as well. Today we see not only the um, breakdown of traditional or, or what to modern people would be traditional communities um, in an economic sense, you know, where we don't really have the um, towns that are industrial towns where people make their living working in local factories and things like that. Instead, more and more people are working in the gig economy. People are also a lot more transient and mobile than they used to be. Uh, people move multiple times throughout their lives to different cities and even different countries. Uh, you People are much less likely to be acquainted with people who live around them. Uh, like there's per virtually nobody in my neighborhood who stays here longer than two years. If, if somebody's been here for maybe three or four years, they're one of the veterans. You know, I've been here most of the last 37 years, so I'm like the you know, uh, senior citizen of the area. Um, so, um, so people don't really have this kind of community-based identity based on friends and neighbors and that kind of stuff. People tend to live apart from their families. Uh, certainly their extended families, um, you know, often in different cities, different states. Uh, so the, so whether it's family, whether it's community, whether it's church or religion, uh, whether it's all these other uh, kinds of traditional identities, those things are breaking down and people are finding new identities in these online subcultures. Uh, and we have all the proliferation of all these cultures um, like the gamers or you know, all the political subcultures or all, all the more newfangled re religions or recycling of old religions, all, all these kinds of things are happening uh, in the same way that they were happening in the 19th century. I mean, if, if Karl Marx and, and Durkheim and Weber and, and those people were here, August Comte, if they were here today, they could really have a field day uh, analyzing what's going on in the world today, particularly in the United States, because I think these changes are the most pronounced in the United States. 
compared to many other um, parts of the world. Uh, but it's a virtual repeat of history. Uh, you know, the digital the digital revolution is the new industrial revolution with all the same kinds of effects. You know, breakdown of traditional community, um, removal of people from their traditional livelihoods in many ways, um, a loss of identity, and efforts by people to find new identities in all of these these other things. Um, and there's also the question of the, the impact of technology on, on the distribution of power. That's one thing we really haven't talked about yet. But one thing that societies of today have that past societies didn't is the uh, ability to engage in things like surveillance uh, that, you know, like the police state uh, dictators of say past times would have been thrilled to have the kind of uh, surveillance power that, that you can have with modern technology. I mean, imagine if Stalin had had, you know, closed circuit television and, you know, uh, all of this kind of stuff. I mean, he would have thought that was the most awesome thing ever. Um, so you also see this kind of surveillance technology that we have. You see the uh, ability to trace individuals. Uh, you know, it used to be, for example, if you were a fugitive, you could go hide somewhere and pretty much get away with it. You know, uh, nowadays it's a bit more difficult. They can trace your cell phone signal. They can trace your use of credit cards. They can trace your your banking activities. They can trace your IP address. Uh, so you're in many ways you're much under the, the thumb of authority figures or institutions uh, now than ever. Uh, you know, even if there are also advantages, obviously, to contemporary technology. Uh, you know, for example, the, the, a lot of the type of work that I do, I wouldn't be able to do without contemporary technology. Uh, and there's a lot of other things I do I wouldn't be able to do with contemporary technology. So it, it's similar to industrial technology in that sense as well. Industrial technology had the effect of growing the size of the middle class, raising uh, living standards in many ways, or, uh, reducing life expectancy, I mean, raising life expectancy. Uh, you know, reducing infant mortality and, and, and a lot of things and a lot of positive benefits to industrial technology, other than just things like convenience, like having cars and airplanes and that kind of stuff. But it's also true that there were uh, there was a, a cost associated with that. You know, one was the destructiveness of modern warfare with industrial technology. Um, and, and also there, you know, modern societies tend to be more tightly regulated in other ways. That's what Weber was talking about when he talked about the iron cage, about how modern bureaucracies had created this iron cage that everybody is subordinated to. Uh, and th so the same, this is a repeat of the 19th century, early 20th century that we're going through right now with digital technology. So the issue that remains as well, to what, how far is that going to go and what can we do to counter that? You know, um, and I don't really have any idea. Okay, Florian, how's your mic doing? It's better now, I hope, huh? Can you hear yeah. me? We got you. Yes. I had to restart my entire computer. Um, such as technology nowadays, by the way. Um, so so I thought maybe you know, I should give like... Foreign, a, it, you're kind of loud. Could you turn down a little okay. bit? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, so um, today, okay. yeah, I thought maybe I, I bring like a, a short overview about yeah, what life in community oriented, com like real life communities looks like uh, just for my, just for my own upbringing in Germany. Uh, I grew up in a little, little village in Germany, in northern Germany, and uh, that was in the 1980s. And I imagine it's probably Germany's 1980s is similar to American 1960s. And I still remember how I came came home from, I was eight years old, maybe. I came home from, from a play date, and then all of a sudden, like four people from the village stood in our house. They just stood in there. They just walked in there. I never seen them before. My mother was cool with it. And um, that the village was, the community was so close knit that people would just go in and out of other people's houses. Nobody locked the doors. And it's really true. If you hear that, it's not just like blah, blah. People really did not lock their houses because it was a strong community. And um, that, that uh, even the TV, which was there, was only used very, very like specifically for a certain, for a certain TV show. Uh, or so all, all the news, and that was it. The TV wasn't running all the time in the background. Um, and, and people, of course, didn't have online opportunities to do things, so they had to do had to associate in real life, right? So that's how community organization looked like probably also 
um, what Robert Putnam described, right? So it's an entirely different organization uh, of community from uh, organizing via Discord servers in modern social media, for example, right? You really are present with your people all the time. And that is really that is really completely gone right now. It may come back, but it's really not there. Now, there were, of course, some people in the village in these communities that would be thrilled with not having to be part of the community, right? So social media and technology also gives people the option of escapism, which some people don't want to be strung along in those community groups. And that was in the 1960s and 70s in the US, probably people that were seeing themselves more on the outside of, of society, right? So everything, everything has a good and a bad side, right? Um, what I found interesting is, um, so first of all, th that I'm talking from a perspective where I clearly have grown up with community like that. And then there's technology. So as a Gen X person, I am able to use both, right? I know how to form normal connections with people, at least I hope. And so I also know how to use technology. And the early millennials ha still are the same, right? They also know how to how to do offline communities. But it's probably more of a problem for Gen Z and Generation Alpha, which is the next generation that's coming up, because they have never learned really to build these communities outside of the online world. So, so they really need to figure out what to do, because I think the 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 um, the urge to follow, the urge to build communities, I think is something that's inherent in people. Humans want to associate with other with others, right? So, so, so people will figure it out. People figured it out in the past, as Keith said. There, you know, our time mirrors the industrial revolution, and people did figure out how to come together and form civic groups. So they will do that with the online revolution as well. How that exactly looks, I don't know, but I'm not pessimistic that these civic group formation will subside. I think that it will come back, but they have to, Gen Z has to figure out how to do that. Um, now, what Alexei also said. Uh, when he talked about the brother Karamazov, and um, it's interesting uh, that they are also visited by Satan. If I look at Thomas Mann's Dr. Faustus, this is about a guy who is like a precocious kid everywhere and also tries to then figure out what holds the world together. And he's also visited by Satan and then goes on his own journey. And the book also raises the question, is it, should we actually wish to explore and do research about our, our environment. Should we not just accept it the way that God has created it for us? And and um, it on his way he becomes more isolated, Dr. Faustus, and also in a way more atomized, right? So there's also this spiritual aspect of community building versus atomization, right? Which I also find really interesting. And and maybe based on that all the um, civic minded communities they were inherently left wing right and and all the um large left wing movements like for example feminism you could also make the argument that those movements have also contributed to atomization right especially feminism who has who tries to form like tries to individualize people and and you know and and take women out of the social fabric of a family and give them independence that of course also contributes to to atomization and we couldn't get a step further the prevailing concept in the west of the nuclear family is completely anathema to uh to like india where you have multi-generational households that is almost unknown it used to be in the west it used to be in the west uh 100 years ago it used to be that way how families families were organized but not anymore and that also contributes to atomization. So it, the question is whether technology just exacerbates it or, or induces it itself. But I find it ironic that all the civically minded people actually in the end bought into some larger movement, which actually also contributed to atomization, right? In in that in that way, modern technology is is a blessing because we now have the option to organize ourselves and you know actually counteract the atomization of society. And that is also something that Putnam brings up in his book and in a follow-up book. So he advocates for uh for more for you know for forming community groups to you know to bring them together in real life, but that can also start online. So 
I overall, my opinion is that that um, technology can be a lot of a can be a threat and lead to more atomization of society, but it holds the tools that allows us to bond together and form more civic engagement again. Again, and I think they all have to be have to be followed up with some real life meeting, right?